Easy. So those are five copies for you. Which one is this? This one. I haven't looked at it yet. So. Yeah, yeah, this one. I haven't read it. Haven't. Just wait, wait. Just wait. Let me read it. What's the What's the key point? Look at page seven, page five. Sorry. responsibility to reply to the submissions that were made on behalf of the petitioner and the interested party yesterday. I do so with regards to the position of the first respondent. And my submissions will have the following okay. structure. So we take it the appearances are as four or are there in the uh, changes? Uh, yeah, I think we need to remind him in this uh, part of the world we do quorum every day. So. I say, allow me to. Of course. <laughs> uh, the part of uh, the petitioner. My name is Omogeni. I appear together with Professor Sihanya to my right. No, sir. Mr. Harvey. I'm present, my ladies and lords. Uh, Julie Sowet. Uh, Twain Obai. I'm present, my ladies and lords. Uh, the rest will be joining us later. For the interested party, <coughs> I have my learned friend, Mr. Fred Atwok. I'm present, my lady. Mr. Maurice Kimuli. Present, my lord. Uh, the rest will be joining us uh, later on. And on behalf of the army, for the first respondent. The forum for the first respondent. Sorry, forgive me. My lady, I. Uh, appearing on behalf of the first respondent, together with Alex. Otherwise, the representation is as it was yesterday. Emmanuel Bitter, together with Oscar Reddy and Mary Muruki. One. 
this matter and in the courts of Kenya. And I reminded myself <coughs> yesterday, whilst I was listening to the submissions of no less than 11 advocates, that what we're dealing with is a judicial review. And it's a judicial review that I intend to address. And I do so with the benefit of my own practical experience in England, having been Treasury Council and undertaken many judicial review matters on behalf of government ministries and departments in England. And I take comfort from the fact that Kenyan law, in essence, adopts a very similar, if not identical, approach to English law with regards that being the case, I make the following four overview submissions. And the first is important, but it seems to have been forgotten by my friends, all 11 of them yesterday. That first and foremost, in the context of judicial review, what the petitioner needs to demonstrate is that the decision to prosecute made by the first respondent on the 28th of August 2018 is susceptible to challenge, essentially on the grounds of rationality. No other ground has been advanced. And the rationality ground, as we will see, was fleshed out in the petition with reference to malice, abusive process, political considerations. Slow down. Yes. <laughs> and again, the court doesn't need to be reminded of this, but perhaps my, my other friends do. The fundamental proposition with regards to rationality, as reflected in Kenyan case law and the leading authorities in England, can be encapsulated as follows. That the decision of the Director of Public Prosecution to execute the petitioner as made on the 28th of August 2018 was not a decision that any reasonable decision maker appraised of the full context could have made. Now that's the result of that, that Kenyan case law and English case law makes it abundantly clear that judicial review is not a process whereby there is trial by affidavit. The, the court is fully aware of this, but it seems that my friends, in their desire to depart from the grounds stated in the petition initially, have forgotten that. Respondent is being examined with reference to the grounds stated in the petition. And it's very important to ensure that the petitioner is held to those grounds. Judicial review is not elastic. The decision crystallized on the 28th of August 2018 and must be tested with regards to the material which was the basis of that decision. And it therefore follows intended as a fact-finding exercise. <coughs> that is the And therefore, the focus should only be on two questions in my respectful submission, unless there's a fundamental departure from the process whereby judicial review <coughs> takes place. 
And the two questions are these. Did the decision have a sustainable basis in law and fact? And second, tainted by irrelevant considerations. And my answer to indicate any irrelevant consideration was at large. So that was the first overview observation. The second is with regards to the I move on to the substance. <coughs> 